Hey guys, Hink here. I got a really good one for you today. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's something that comes up all the time is the effect of caffeine. Is it good, bad, neutral, what? As far as erectile health and how it's applicable for PE. So today we're gonna actually break down the science behind it and get a definitive answer so we can, once again, stop having this debate online. So stay tuned. I guarantee you, you'll be surprised by something uh, I say today. All right, guys, uh, so today we're gonna talk all about caffeine and its role when it comes to penile health. And so to start, let's just talk about caffeine. So it is a powerful CNS stimulant, actually. So the way it works, so the way it promotes wakefulness is by blocking the adenosine receptors. And so here's a little hack I learned from Andrew Huberman, but if you actually wait about 90 minutes, uh, the first 90 minutes of the day before consuming caffeine, you won't have that crash that you normally get when you drink coffee and then you crash later and you have to drink some more coffee because it allows basically time for the adenosine to clear. And so you get a, a more effective use of the caffeine. So consider that. When we're talking about how much caffeine, most people consume less than 400 milligrams. That's typically what's uh, recommended by the FDA. So let's get into some of the actual science behind it. So here's what I'm gonna go ahead and say are some of the misconceptions. So number one, that it's really bad for you because of its vasoconstrictive effects. So let's just talk general health here. So does it lead to more heart attacks or heart failure? No, okay? Clinical science proved that is actually not the case. And when we're talking about vasoconstriction, does it lead to increases in blood pressure? No. Once again, you can see in some cases a temporary transient increase in blood pressure, which is oftentimes actually followed by a decrease in blood pressure. So no uh, permanent issues there. So when we're actually looking at the conclusions of some of these studies, it says overall these studies suggest no association between caffeine consumption and hypertension in a baseline healthy population, okay? And so we're somewhere where it does actually impact blood flow is actually your cerebral blood flow, okay? And so when you have headaches, uh, oftentimes I even prescribe uh, caffeine-based pills for headaches headaches because it does cause actual cerebral, meaning brain blood flow constriction to decrease the amount of blood going to the head, which can help with headaches. When we're talking about endothelial function, does it impact endothelial function? Well, actually, the overall consensus from this study was that no, there is no benefit. However, there are other studies which show that it actually can improve endothelial cell function. And so the endothelial lining is what's partially responsible for releasing nitric oxide, getting a good erection, okay? So that's kind of health in general. Now, when we talk about actual penile specific health, this is where things get fun. And so they did an actual study looking at um, rabbits and the corpus cavernosum of rabbits and actually how, when exposed to caffeine, what effect does it have? It actually found that caffeine is a smooth muscle relaxant. When you have an erection, it's because you have the smooth muscles in the penis relax and allow the chambers to engorge and fill with blood. And so caffeine causes that smooth muscle relaxation. Another study showed that actually um, the CGMP or cyclic GMP was up-regulated when they looked at diabetic rats. And so, well, what, what the hell does that mean? Well, when you're talking about PDE5 inhibitors or like Viagra, the way that it works is by up-regulating cyclic GMP. That's the actual signal, as you can see in this picture, that goes into basically the smooth muscles and causes them to relax based on the, you know, protein um, kinase. So when you have higher levels of cyclic GMP, you're, it's essentially functioning as, uh, as a Viagra because caffeine is actually a PDE. PDE inhibitor, okay? So it's not a specific PDE inhibitor like a PDE5 inhibitor like Viagra Cialis does. It inhibits all of the phosphodiesterases, but as a result, you do get some benefit as far as the increased GMP, which is measurable in this study, guys. So caffeine actually might be a good thing. Stay tuned, okay? So you can also have increases in the cyclic AMP or CAMP, which is another substance that can lead to increased vasodilation and as a result, better erections. Okay, and so here is another study which actually showed that you have improved smooth muscle relaxation in the penis, and that's based on the adenosine receptors. Once again, as we already talked about, caffeine works on those adenosine receptors, and so that's where that impact is coming from. It's all kind of making sense. And so what, what are the evidence in humans? Yeah, rats, blah, 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 we're not rats. Well, here's a study, it's kind of a dog study, but it's actually looking at how um, if you drink this caffeine and citrulline and some other substance-based energy drink, basically, it actually improves erection. Proved in a randomized control trial. Yeah, guys, please don't go out and buy whatever substance is in this trial. It's just an example, okay? Here's where it gets good. So this study actually showed that caffeine intake was inversely associated with a risk of erectile dysfunction. So essentially, if you drink caffeine, more caffeine equals less erectile dysfunction, and that's what we'll show here. So guys, what we see here is that 
caffeine triggers a series of pharmacological effects that leads to the relaxation of the penile, ar the penile arteries and the cavernous smooth muscle that lines the cavernessal spaces, thus increasing penile blood flow. Once again, caffeine is doing that, okay? So speaking of increasing penile blood flow, guys, we have our own supplement, it's called Vigor. I personally just designed this formula, which is gonna increase your blood flow based on real clinical science. I actually made a video describing everything that goes into it. But guys, it, you know, I'm not, of course I'm plugging my own here. It works. I'm not gonna lie, like my erection quality is dramatically improved with even just a half a scoop of Vigor before it's time to get intimate with my significant other. So guys, just check it out. It's getting great reviews on Amazon. I'll put the link uh, available below. Uh, you can also find it on Leviathan Sups. Um, but like I said, I made a whole video on it if you wanna learn a little bit more about it. If you appreciate me, what I do, please go check out the supplement. I put a lot of time and effort and research into it, okay? Back to our regularly scheduled programming. And so when you're looking at what's the dose of caffeine, Okay, so you're saying, okay, yeah, caffeine helps, but what dose would you recommend? Well, in that diabetic rat study that showed that it improved, they used the equivalent of about 250 milligrams of caffeine daily. If you actually look in that human study, it was actually a dose response that they looked at. What they found was that the best outcomes as far as decreasing risk of erectile dysfunction was in the 170 milligrams to the 375 milligram group. So I'll put that up here. And so what else is caffeine good for? Well, it's really good for exercise. There's a study here here, which shows that um, not only can you improve your exercise output, have a better workout, but it also improves mental focus. Caffeine actually releases dopamine, the feel-good um, you know, substance in your body. If you are about to work out and you want to take some caffeine before you work out, you'll actually get a little bit of a high and it'll make you more inclined to work out. So that can help with weight loss. And in general, it actually promotes fat loss itself. As you guys have probably read on Reddit, I wish people would just stop worrying about pulling on their dicks and just get to the gym and lose weight. It'd be much more better for their overall health, but caffeine can help you do that, okay? So what are the side effects? Well, too much caffeine can literally kill you. It can throw you into heart arrhythmias, arrhythmias and you die, especially powdered. If you buy caffeine powder, which is illegal in the United States, but it is legal in places like Britain, and therefore they have people who mistake caffeine powder for like a pre-workout powder, drink a scoop, die. And so what are some of the other side effects? Anxiety, jitters, insomnia, racing heart feelings, dehydration, diarrhea, all of those things can happen with caffeine. And so how is it cleared in your body? Well, um, it typically kicks in in about 15 to 30 minutes of consumption, depending on whether or not you have an empty stomach or not. And the half-life in general of caffeine is around six hours. And so six hours from consumption, you're still going to be have about half as much in your body. Interestingly enough, as you get to be an old man like me into your 40s and above and beyond, your ability to actually metabolize or decrease the amount of caffeine in your body actually decreases. And so a cup of coffee is going to last you a lot longer. So you'll have to be aware of that. So what are the conclusions? So caffeine absolutely is not not bad, okay? There's even actually substantial evidence that for our purposes, increasing penile blood flow, minimizing long-term risk of erectile function, and even increasing blood flow to increase potential gains, caffeine could be helpful. It's a natural PDE inhibitor, similar to Viagra. It aids in improving smooth muscle relaxation, and years there are studies in animal models showing it improves erectile quality. These studies were in low or moderate doses, guys, so excess caffeine is bad. I would not recommend that. If you're not taking it, I don't think you need to add it, quite personally. However, if you're trying to lose weight, increase your focus, I think a little caffeine is good, okay? So what are my personal recommendations? Don't change anything. If you're not taking caffeine, continue to not take it, but if you are taking caffeine, just know that it is not going to be harmful and you don't have to worry if you're inhibiting your gains or something by drinking caffeine. If you do take it, I would recommend less than 400 milligrams a day, especially if you're a smaller person, the less is better. And I don't think you need to add it to any kind of stack. Please guys, don't go on Reddit and be like, oh, this is my stack based on Hink and it has all of this shit which I never really said. And so I don't think you need to add caffeine. I just don't think it's gonna be harmful. Don't be afraid of it. Enjoy your coffee if you wanna drink it, enjoy your pre-workout. So guys, thanks for watching. Please check out some of my other videos like how citrulline works, why you need PDE5 inhibitors and many others to actually understand like the real science behind this and why I recommend what I recommend and how it can be beneficial. Do your own research, don't take my word for it. If you need to reach me, you wanna to talk to me, video chat, whatever, go through my Patreon. I don't check messages on Reddit, okay? Peace and love guys. Talk to you on the next one.